Hi, I'm Janet Bufton with Adam Smith Works. I'm Sarah Byrne from Rochester Institute of Technology. And this is the Smith Questionnaire. So Sarah, I'm just gonna go right in. Sounds good. So would you rather be loved or lovely? Uh, um, I, I know the right answer is lovely. Uh, <laughs> but I would have to say being, you know, loved by, by like my dog or like my parents, you know, unconditionally without any sort of sense seems very heartening to me. So I think having the ignorance that you would have to just be loved and not worry about achieving oh. would be very pleasant, right? If not continually, at least for, you know, a brief hour or something and be like, oh, so this is what that's like. Like a loved break. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, wealth of nations or a theory of moral sentiments? Theory of moral sentiments, yeah. I think it's um, more complex and more hard to understand exactly what he's trying to do, whereas wealth of nations, I think, is fairly straightforward. Brilliant, but straightforward. All right. If Adam Smith had a dog, what kind of dog would it be? Ooh. My first thought is terrier. But then, so I think it has to be something, I guess I'll just puzzle it through. I think it has to be something that is affectionate and pleasant to be around, but would have some utility. So like if someone was like, okay. why do you have this dog? Then it's not just like, cause I like having dogs around and they're pleasant. <laughs> um, so I think, oh, you know what? Like a Wheaton Terrier or maybe a Beagle. I think I'm gonna oh. side with Beagle. Yeah, cause they're like, cause they have to do something and they do do effective things and they're good, they're good for hunting. So you could like make an excuse for yourself, but really it's because you want to sit by the fire and they could like bring you, like I, I could see him like getting a beagle to bring him slippers. So, yeah. Ah, yeah, I could picture this. Yeah. All right, what is the best antidote to the torpor induced by the division of labor? Um, certainly education is true, but like what kind of education is then really important? The part of that I think would have to be some kind of like beauty, both literary and just like physically be looking at something so like some sort of natural beauty right it's a bit more of a romantic notion as in like the romantics not you know, <laughs> you know but i just mean like being experiencing nature and being part of it and understanding that like these hills for whatever reason you can't figure out are attractive like getting out of the torpor getting out of like a factory setting and seeing that kind of thing i think is would be enlivening so, but still lots of, like some sort of education, especially being able to, to read and engage. Yeah. Okay. Would you rather have a beer in a pub or a champagne in a salon with Smith? As a person, I would rather a champagne in a salon, but I think with him, it would be better as a beer in a pub. So I think I'd probably pick beer in a pub. All right. What do you pursue for pleasure that was once followed from necessity? Oh, there's not a lot of necessity in my life. I shouldn't have said that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, cooking. Yeah, I guess I used, to, I used to work in restaurants, and so I was obviously paid. And the objective at some point very early in my life was to be a chef. So now I just do it for fun, like when, especially when I could, could have people over for dinners, and it was always nice to cook for people. Related. If you could host a dinner party with Adam Smith, who else would you invite? Oh, um, definitely Hume, because they were like buddies, right? Really yeah, good. you get to see the dynamic, finally. Yeah, and I think that would be really interesting. Also, Hume sounds like a great person to have around. No one would be upset about that. Um, I think Rousseau, just to kind of round it out, because I'm sure they wouldn't get along. <laughs> uh, then I guess, all right, we're, we can't make this too big. I wouldn't, I would like to see Adam Smith having a conversation with like someone ancient. I think probably Aristotle, who's like extremely oh. sensible. So someone like Aristotle, if you could kind of bridge that divide. Sure. Uh, that would be really interesting. So I think I, yeah, I think I'll stop at three and say those guys. I can't that sounds like a pretty good dinner party. It would be a really fun dinner party. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, then maybe something weird, some weird modern person, but I can't think of anyone off the top of my head. But. Yeah, like some sort of conversationalist. But again, I can't think of anyone. Yeah, that's okay. What does your impartial spectator look like? Um, I would say someone who has 
while objective, a generous interpretation of my um, moral decisions. And so therefore, while I'm, you know, thinking through a decision like, do I go with this, um, you know, uh, sorry, do I go with this publication for a book or do I go with that publication for a book? They would say, obviously the most important thing that you're thinking about is, you know, how well the book will do and how well the editor will help you make the book or how good you, the editor will help you make the book. And so that would be the kind of generous thing I'd like them to think rather than, you know, you're just trying to get a better publisher or something like that. Um, <laughs> and so I would say like a cross between my grandmother and because she always has very sensible ways of thinking about things, uh, but is still able to kind of say like, this is morally unacceptable. And maybe, I don't know, someone like Lauren Hall, who does a pretty good job of like being principled, even when it gets in the way. So I think it's a cross between my grandmother and Lauren Hall as an immoral, a, a impartial spectator. All right. So now that you had a second to think about your impartial spectator, what is the last thing your impartial spectator said to you? Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> um, I think be nicer to your mother. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I think that she hasn't, she hasn't been enjoying this or enjoying it. She hasn't been handling the pandemic as well as others have been handling it. So I think it would have been better for me to be more sympathetic to that rather than saying, this isn't that bad, why are you complaining? So I definitely felt bad about that. And I think my impartial spectator was like, really, you could have, you could have tried harder there. That's okay. That's, that's how we improve, right? Mm -hmm. So this is my last question. If an afterlife exists, what would you like to discuss with Adam Smith when you get to meet him? Uh, well, the big, obviously divide, like why, why the big division between wealth of nations and moral, theory of moral sentiment? Because it doesn't feel like to me, a lot of people have figured it out well, and I certainly don't feel like I have a good handle on how you reconcile those two things together. So just asking him how they fit and why he presented each of them and whether it was like circumstantial, you know, like how all those things work together in his head and what made him think, I want to simultaneously give these people this kind of a moral education and this kind of an economic education, you know, squaring that circle would be fascinating. Right. Even yeah. if the answer is just, I felt both of those things and I think both of them are true. I don't see what the problem is. <laughs> like, <laughs> that would be satisfying to me, which I could see him saying, or I could, I think I could see him saying. Yeah. It would be interesting. It would be good uh, dinner party conversation. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, Janet.